Hello and welcome back. About a year and a half ago, or just under, I did a review on my channel of these watercolors. These are the Marie's watercolors. They're from China. They are really, really inexpensive. I paid 10 euros for these 12 tubes of paint. And um, my expectations for a set of paint like this is not super high. And um, actually these surpassed my expectations. They, they're actually quite okay for what they are, inexpensive paints. They live up to some of my expectations of inexpensive paint, namely that they're so packed with uh, fillers that they crack when they dry on the palette. Um, so, but, but that's, that's okay. I mean, I have paid more than 10 euros for a tube of paint sometimes. I got Daniel Smith tubes that I paid more than this, whole, what I paid for this old set. So, yeah, I would be kind of upset if my, if these were as good as my Daniel Smith paints. And they're not. But they're okay. They're okay for a 10 euro set. Now, if you swatch them out and you start mixing colors here, you get a little bit of a problem with this color. It, uh, it's a green blue. It says Prussian blue on it, but it, I'm quite convinced it is a Thala blue. It doesn't have the right color of, of the Prussian blue and it has a, a tinting and mixing strength that is more like, and the color is more like a Thala blue. It then has a violet instead of a um, ultramarine blue or something like that. And, and that can cause a little bit of problems if you want to do a neutral color. But uh, overall it's, it's, it's a fine set. There is some mixing issues with it. There's, if you want to mix some of the traditional uh, gray tones, you can't because they, it just doesn't work that way. Um, but overall, other than that, you can mix a lot of nice greens and there's a good range of browns you can, uh, there's three browns in here and a black, and you can mix quite good gr browns as well. So uh, for uh, maybe landscaping, it's okay. For floral painting, mm, not so much. Portrait, I wouldn't try. It could be that it, it does, I, I haven't actually tried to mix portrait colors with it. Anyways, there, there was a couple of issues with, with the mixing. So that video is kind of old and four weeks ago, and I'm really sorry I didn't see this uh, comment. It was sorted out, uh, thrown in the a bin with things I should look at because it was maybe not appropriate. So it was filtered out by YouTube and I haven't been directly on my YouTube channel for over a month. Uh, I've only done um, what the comments I have replied to, I've replied to from my tablet. And on my tablet I can't log in as well as I can on my computer. So I'm sorry that that comment sat there for four weeks. Anyways, there was a person who commented and said I should try and use a proper brush and a proper palette to mix on. And I looked at that comment and I was thinking, well, whatever issues I might have had at the time, it would not have been solved by a different palette or a different brush. I watched the video back because I didn't remember entirely all the details of it. And basically I'm happy with that video. There might be a little bit with the lighting and blah, 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 maybe some wording. You can always correct something, but by and large, I stand by that video. What I did use on that video was a water brush, maybe not this one, but a water brush, and a plastic palette like this. And apparently that is not proper equipment for watercolor according to this person. I have no idea what, why that is not adequate, but I am positive and I am sure I uh, there's no doubt in my mind. You can't change 
the properties of paint by using a certain brush and a certain palette. If I take two tubes of paint in here, now this is a blue and a burnt sienna, this will be able, these two paints will be able to create a range of colors going from blue to burnt sienna brown and, and some colors in between. It is not affected whatsoever by neither the palette nor my brush. I could take actually no palette and the worst brush I own, which is this one, and I would still get the same colors out of mixing the two because the colors that comes out of it is a, is a result of the paint, not the other equipment. Um, now, with that said, I don't know what a proper palette is uh, because that was not specified. I can tell you why some people prefer a, pl a porcelain palette over a plastic palette. Um, and that is the fact that it, it, a plastic palette is not a bad palette. It just annoys people a lot. Some people. When you put water on plastic and you let it go, it creeps up. People call it to bead up in English. And that can annoy some people because if you... I got a little bit of leftover paint on my current dash palette here. So I'll pick up some paint and put in there. So when it beads up like that, the your perception of the color is that it is darker than what it looks like once you paint it onto the paper. Uh, so it looks quite dark, but when I paint it on, it is quite pale. Let me pick this up so we don't waste it. Now, if we do the same thing over here on the porcelain, now it, it runs it to the bottom of the well here, but it stays pretty much where you put it and you can you get a much closer uh, perception of what it looks on on the palette and what it looks on on the paper but even if I pick it up there it's still the same color now there's a lot of water in my brush so I have to dilute, dilute it a little bit because it the water came down but this is still the same color regardless of what palette I, I use if you want to use one or the other palette, that is entirely up to you. I'm thinking that whoever goes out and pay 10 euros for a set of watercolors, they would they go out and use 15 euros on a on a palette? Maybe, maybe not. So yeah, so buy whichever one you want. If you're just starting out, I'm quite sure you can figure out how to use a, a plastic palette. If you're in doubt about the color, it is only just to try and have a little piece of swatch paper to, to test it out on if you if this beating up confuses you. So uh, now I have used this. This is a quill brush from Jackson's. It, I guess, as proper as it gets except I go into sable or some really expensive ones, but this works quite well. I have no idea what is supposedly wrong with a water brush. I quite like water brushes and um, for color mixing it is the same as with the palettes. It, it doesn't really matter what brush you use. It's the same color you get off the, the palette. I like making gradients with, with a water brush. It's easier than with the the regular brushes. And um, I'd say over large areas, I would use the quill brush better because it's difficult to make it nice and flat like this. But for a, a color swatch and a color mix. This works just as good as any any other brush. I like it for detailing. I like it for gradients. So 
and I'll try and pick some up with this quill brush. There's the brown. And here's the red. And yeah, because it's wetter, I can't even get it defined as well. But that's just a, I could have used a drier, smaller brush. It is the same color that comes off, and they mix the same on the paper. It's a matter of how much water you use. So, um, can even. And as for if it was for the getting the paint out of the pan, dried paint is actually coming out better with a with this brush than with the quill brush because this has has some stiffer bristles, so it scrubs better. Now, that was how it doesn't matter with palettes. Now this palette I brought out because it had some paint on it that I could use as an example and also because you can talk about properties of palettes in a different way. Now, now it's as clean as it gets. This is stained badly and as much as I love my Caran d'Ache palette here, it's plastic but with a rough edge, there is some beading up on this but not too bad but it stains as you see. I spend a lot of time uh, with using baking soda and baking powder and, and stuff and acid to clean this up to make it go as much back to white as I can. It stains. And if you mix colors on this and you needed, I need a specific color on your p painting, especially if it's a faint color like that, it can really affect your perception of the color using this palette because the green will shine through whatever color you're trying to mix if it's a high heavy pigmented mixture you're making the staining will not be as important but if you make really, really thin washes like that it, it might disturb you but on the other hand people get used to incredible things so if you're used to working with your same old grotty stained palette you will you will automatically know how to adjust for, for that as a beginner it's better to use a clean white palette so that's that's the effect of a color mixing on palettes and um, again Pick up whatever you like. I got both. I I like plastic palettes and I'm not ashamed of having a very inexpensive plastic palette that I use on a regular basis. I use this with all my paints, no matter what the price tag is. And I'm fine with it. If somebody think I'm a lesser artist for that, that's their thought and opinion. I can't change that. I don't want to try. I love, love, love my porcelain palette. I kind of like that feature that it doesn't beat up. Don't get me wrong. But what I like the most about it is it is heavy and it sits nicely on my desk and is difficult to push around. You can't knock it over. It, it's very sturdy. This one I like for the room and it's flat and yeah, I'm just sad it stains so bad. But buy whatever you like. Small, big, flat, weld, whatever. It definitely does not make any difference for how you paint. Um, you can get enamel uh, palettes as well. And the only ones I have of that is in my paint tins here. Sometimes they beat up, a little, the paint beats up, it actually does on this one and I think it's because there's a plastic layer on it and other times it doesn't. Me, I don't care. I, I can paint anyways. Um, I, uh, I manage to scrub it out a little bit and then I see what color it is and then it goes on the paper and I'm good. But 
by all means, anyone's choice is their choice. So, um, yeah, I, I really have nothing to, to add really, because, um, there's a lot to say about brushes and how they work and what you should use when and stuff. But for color mixing, it really doesn't matter. This is a terrible, terrible brush. It uh, it loses hair. It can't keep its shape at all. It can't be molded into a any kind of shape, proper shape when it's wet either. You always should look at a brush when it's wet, but it, it can't, and it keeps. You can shave it a little bit and pick out hairs, but as soon as you put it on paper, it it, it loses its its integrity. It has no spring to it. This one is difficult to paint a painting with, but it could be used for swatches. No problem. I'll show you. So it's wet. There's. I'm gonna pick up some paint. What is it? Oh my goodness, now I put hair solo on my palette. What I don't do for fame. <laughs> so, yeah. And that color is the same even if I pick it up with this one, which is a, a Cotman. It's a dry Cotman. There, same color. Different quality pay, uh, brush, but no massive difference in in color. So, yeah, for for painting you want a proper brush, and uh, if you like water brushes, they are as proper brushes as any other. And um, yeah. I was gonna actually make a new swatch of these uh, for the sake of it and I'm gonna try and go back and revisit what was the issue with some of the colors each um, by, by themselves they, they're fine but this one for being the only color yellow in this set it's um, it's a little uh, too cold. Uh, it's a little greenish. There's actually when I put it in here, it gets a little bit of a green rim. It doesn't show up much on the camera, if at all. So that's very it's it's brilliant for mixing greens. Here I got a vermilion, and that is very orange. So that's actually good that it's orange in itself, but. I might be wanting an orange that is kind of in between the two of those. That is a more yellowy orange. So, and I'll use the proper palette and a semi proper pencil or brush. So, here's the yellow, and in itself, it's fine. Uh, I'll add some more. It's not very strong colored because there's not all that much pigment. There's a lot of filler in this paint, but not a lot of pigment. But there you go. There's a yellow. Let's see if I can get my lights to work with me. And that's a little difficult because it wants to flicker. It has to be like this because the other lamp flickers today and it have some reflections too but that is as dark as this yellow can go that's the the mass tone here we have the Verid vermilion it dries up a little more red when it dries than it is when it is wet and using wet paint right out of the tube is, is a little tricky because it it acts like glue. It really sticks in clumps to your brush. 
there's a little something. And this one on its own is also fine. Now, let's try and mix a wash in here. It won't make any difference to the outcome, but let's just try and do it. Pick up some of the red here. When I mix the two, I do not get a bright orange. I get kind of a slightly peachy orange. And it gets even more evident when I thin it out. It's not bright. It is orange, but it is a, it's almost a sienna orange. Let's see if I can wait until it dries. And that is because that is a cold yellow and that is a warm red. And a warm red and a cold yellow will give a slightly muted orange because this yellow leans towards blue. So it's a little bit more over to become, uh, it's on its way to become a contrast color. It's not a contrast color, but it, it has a little bit of a blue in it. So that is why, and, and it doesn't matter which palette or brush or whatever I use, I will never be able to mix a bright orange from these two colors. And it has nothing to do with the brand either. It's the pigment uh, property of this. In order to mix a, a bright orange, I would need a warm yellow. And I will actually find one from here. Here I got a, a warm yellow. So let me get some of that. Put it in there. It's a new gamboge yellow and this is uh this is not great this is my uh, rembrandt colors well bad idea so let's try the vermilion here and mix it in and you can see immediately that's a whole different bright orange that that those two gets so again, it's not the brand, it is the choice of pigment they have put in there. So I can't take this vermilion and make a, a kind of a, like a normal orange with it. I get this burned orange and that's fine if it's landscaping or something. But if you want a like an orange flower or something. You can't do that with this set. And, um, so the other thing was that this blue, let me put a little bit out here. This is a phthalo blue. And as I, I can actually, now I, I worked a little more with pigments and stuff. I can maybe understand why they decided to put this one in here but they put a little extra green in there. Now, here we got crimson, which is a cold red, which it makes good purples. So can I mix a good purple with that blue? I know I can't. And again, I'll even take this brush that is very proper. And I'll take some of that blue that I'm positive is a phthalo blue. And that's why I'm not going to take a whole lot of it. Sticks to my brush. There. And then we take the carmine here. It will make a purple, but it won't make a bright purple. It 
could be a lot worse, but it could also be better. It is fairly bright, but it has a little bit of a burgundy quality to it. And that again is because the blue is a little bit on the green side. Is it a usable color? It is, but it's not as bright as you could have them. So let's take the violet in and mix in instead with that, with that carmine. Let's pick a bit up of that, put it in there, wrench my brush out, pick up some of this carmine and mix in. And this is a much brighter violet. And depending on how much of one or the other color you mix in, it gets quite bright. So you can mix purples, both bright and not. Now, the reason why I would actually have really wished that there was an ultramarine color in here is because mixing neutrals and if you read up about mixing grays, one of the very, very popular and commonly used mixes is with burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. It gives a very nice cloudy gray, except I don't have an ultramarine here. So you try, you might have to go with what you get. So, or what you got. So. Let's get some of this in there, mix it around, rinse, get clean water, get a little, some of the glue here. And I've tried this several times. No matter what I do, this mixture turns kind of yellowish green, depending on if I have more sienna it gets yellowish and if i have more blue it turns more green you can't get that same bluish gray as you get if you take an ultramarine color so what to do yeah well we could try and take this one and then say okay the violet or the yeah the violet it took the place of the the ultramarine making purples so let's see what happens now and what i get is a dusty a very nice dusty gray grape color and i can maybe try and add some more blue and now i get kind of a a dusty blue but none of these are gray for that it needs to be more yellow you could add some yellow and stuff but now we are out in in kind of a little more advanced uh, color mixing you can't just do a two color gray here and that was kind of my my issue or my thought about this is if, if you buy a set of paint as a beginner you will read up on how to mi mix colors and you will get often be told to some good ideas to to mix grays you can always mix grays uh, i can easily turn either of these gray this one's too yellow and the opposite of yellow is violet so we will add a little bit of violet to this and i'm quite sure we can hit a a gray eventually oh, it's a bit too red so we need Probably some more yellow here. That was too much. Grab some blue. Always play around with it until you hit it. They have very different mixing strengths, so it's a little tricky to get right. 
but there is a, a grayish color here. So I can I can do it. I know my color theory and stuff. So so it's not that I I couldn't mix a gray myself. It is my thought is it would be easier for a beginner if there was an ultramarine blue. So I got ultramarine blue here. I think. Now I'm mixing on the paper because that absolutely also have no influence. So here we get that bluish gray here. That is so easy to mix with burnt sienna and an ultramarine blue. That is a lot easier to achieve than, than poking around. With the colors you got, I can I can paint whatever I like with this, but I am I'm thinking that is a an inexpensive set and it's aimed. Um, don't know if it's aimed for beginners, but that is the target uh, target target people that will buy it usually. So um, yeah, I've used different brushes and stuff, and I came up with the same result. I I still miss a ultramarine in that. Now if you go from this up to the 18 set then you get some more blues and you get probably also more yellows and stuff so so that can, you can do a little more with. Um, I still think these are quite good for I have, for the fact that I paid 10 euros for it. Absolutely. There are a lot of fillers there. Are, you can't make it really really dark in here. You can, it can be really difficult to get really deep dark colors but if you like kind of the the transparent look of watercolors you can absolutely use them. Um, but uh, your palette and your choice of brushes does not affect what colors you can mix. That is the property of the paints. So um, yeah, and about brushes, I, I can I can go on a long rant about brushes. In a, by and large, I don't think you need to go out and buy the most expensive brushes you can get. You a mid-range synthetic brush will do well for most people, or a mixed hair if you want to invest in in that. Real hair brushes, they're of course fantastic, but they're also fantastically expensive. So if you're still practicing, if, if you're not sure if you will even be doing watercolor next year, don't go out and buy a sable brush. It's not worth it. A good uh, synthetic or a mixed hair will do well. And then match your brush size to what you're painting. If you want to paint a whole page like this, Now, if we should do like a sky kind of thing there, it's going to be a green sky. A big brush like this that can hold a lot of water and making a, a wash in your pan. Now, I have dissolved all the paints into water because it was just a little dollop of paint I used. You can, you can uh, paint a fairly even um, area with a bigger brush. Now this paper is very absorbent so it will streak some. I should have pre-weighted it. But if you had to do this with a small brush it would streak even worse. And it bulges and stuff. This is a, a fairly thin paper, so it it buckles. But a big wet brush for a big area that you want painted is the way to go. And because the paint is what it is, it also doesn't really want to move in the water very much. That's all the fillers that kind of makes it stay where it is. A 
a big flat would have been even better than this. But I'll show you. So if we try and paint on the, this is even harder with a small brush because it runs out of water long before it's done. So big brushes for big areas, small brushes for smaller things. So as this will even out even more as it dries, this is going to stay streaky. So that, that that's one point where brushes matter but um, color mixing you can do it with your finger if you like it doesn't really change the fact of the the pigment properties so um, yeah I think that's really all I have to say now that was my rant about equipment for today so thank you all for watching please like and subscribe bye bye